quick thank you to Sleep Number and DoorDash for sponsoring this episode. To really love a thing so much that it like defines you, but to also never be happy or satisfied, that sucks. Like, is there any part (laughs) of this thing that you love that you actually love? My calling it, Cyberpunk is gonna be a letdown. My calling it is that Final Fantasy VII Remake is gonna be a letdown. Fun fact, guys, if you think about buying a castle, they look cheap on the outset, but it's not the price of the castle that'll get you. It's the taxes and castle fees. Tax. And yeah. it's also Afterwards. feeding the serfs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, if I chew a cough drop, I won't chew it, but like, um, I kind of don't want to cough. Be, no, you can suck on it slightly. Is it audible? Okay, I'd cool. say like, just make, just I be mindful noticed. of... Uh, when you're talking, it's not clanking against your teeth. Yeah, I keep it stored in my gum, like I do with um. Yeah, you. Teeth. I mean, if anyone's, if <laughs> I thought you were about to say teeth, <laughs> like I do with my teeth. I mean, if anyone's going to be good at controlling their their voice and their talking with random things in their mouth, be the it would be you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that sucked. <laughs> sorry. That's, that sucked a lot. Very sorry. <laughs> no, it's uh, funny. Welcome, everyone, to the Smosh cast. This, is, I believe, is in number 51. Wow. And, yeah, and today I'm joined by my lovely two boys, uh, Damien Haas Hello. and Shane Ta. Hey. It's bros like we. Look bros at this tired like boy. We. Bros like we. He's He's tired man. Again. Yes, very uh, tired. We we flew back from, uh, from Houston. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what back were you tired. guys doing in Houston? So this podcast coming out because of the tour, this podcast coming out in a, a couple weeks after we recorded it. Mm-hmm. But uh, we were at the WWE Royal Rumble mm-hmm. 2020, mm-hmm. baby. And, so uh, what's nuts. what is the Royal Rumble? What separates a Royal Rumble from a, a different wrestling match? Apparently, they're, uh, from what I've been told, there are four like, big match styles per year. And this one is a 30-person battle royale. Two people start in, and every two minutes, or roughly two minutes, um, another person is added to the mix. What? The one rule is that uh, to get someone out, you have to get them over the top rope, and both of their feet have to touch outside of the ring. So sometimes people are thrown under the ropes, and they can hop That's back fine. in. Um, or they're thrown over, and they manage to, like leap across into the like the barrier yeah. and they stand <laughs> along the barrier and they run around and they like bit, manage to jump back to the r- there's what? a ton it's like their feet didn't touch oh, yeah as long yeah. as it, it's very much like it, in a way it's like kind of playground rules of like like the floor, floor is lava floor is lava and yeah. they really mess around with it like they yeah. make sure every now and then like a wrestler gets really close or like has one foot uh, one in the women's rumble a woman got thrown off and then there was a, oh, a uh, no, Naomi, I think it's her yeah, name. and Naomi? and this wrestler named Otis was was laying down on the ground on she the side, on and him? she landed on top of him. Nice. And then she was able to stand oh. up on top of him and then like leap back into the ring. They have like tons of bits like that planned. It's really fun. Yeah, it's nuts, man. And like it was cool. They get tossed around. And, like they had never seen wrestling before. No, I'd no. never been to a match. Same. And like they're destroying. Oh. Like they got thrown into the announcer stand. And every like, mm-hmm. and it's not like it's a fake announcer stand. Like there were there were TV screens and all this equipment set up and I mean a guy got thrown it and just destroyed it like <laughs> it just all got annihilated and you guys and you guys got tickies right at like the floor like I, I saw you guys on, on television they really took care of us um, because again we were kind of spoiled now because we had never seen any kind of wrestling match just being there would have been enough but yeah. like we were literally behind the announcers first row like floor <laughs> level so people kept tweeting us like hey I just saw you on TV is that you and they were like your face looked like a, a kid in a candy store but yeah. as cool as it was, you know, there were times where I didn't really know how to react. Like I was cheering for everybody as they came out. But then yeah. there was like, I think four or five people into the like women's uh, battle royale or Royal Rumble. Um, I was like, yeah. And then everyone tapped me and they were like, no. And I was like, not no, her. Dude. not her. She's the baddest one. Brock Lesnar like, got when when he got taken out. Matt Robb was just like, yeah, you yeah. suck. And Brock, Brock Lesnar <laughs> looked right at Matt Robb. <laughs> it was great. And then Matt Robb just shrunk. Just shrunk. I, oh, yeah. I have a photo of like um, the guy who defeated Brock Lesnar, like stamping around on stage as Brock Lesnar like looks up at like me and Matt's area. It's kind of a cool shot. It's definitely dope. You get into it. Like, yeah. Yeah. like I, I went in not knowing much about it, but by the end, you're like, yeah, boo! boo. You suck, Brock yep. Lesnar! F*** you! Yeah, that, yeah. Trent, <laughs> that Trent Reznor sure is me. It's a, it's a band joke for some very specific people. There you go. It's a Nine Inch Nails <laughs> reference? Yeah, yep, Trent Reznor. Oh, Bro- Brock Lesnar, Trent 
Yep. Lesnar. Yep. Ooh, that's a tongue twister. Yep. Uh, I'm warming up Brock Lesnar, Trent Reznor, Brock Lesnar, Trent Reznor. But um, <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of comparisons uh to it. Like, I mean, we realized it, it, wrestling is anime. It is in a lot of it's ways. It's essentially anime. Like the storylines are anime. The way that it's like, oh no, he's about to get beaten. He's like, he's like unconscious. Like, oh no, get up, Roman yeah, Reigns. Like, everyone you can in the do audience it. is like, and stand like, up. We believe in you. Yeah, you know, yeah. like slowly like, get that's up. That's all it took. They just had to believe in me. <laughs> but literally, that's we even made that joke because we talked about it with like a you know a certain movie that came out recently it's like oh no now he's gonna believe harder and that's how he's gonna defeat him like that's and that's, that's how it goes that's how it works you wow. just have to do harder do more of it yeah that's, that's why i hate singing movies and singing like tv shows because they just have to sing harder yeah like the dreamworks sing that came out or whatever uh -huh. it's literally just like if you want to make a difference, yeah. you're going to have to go out there and sing the best, most goodest, the most you ever did. And then yeah. it's like, now I am, now I can do it. That's, I mean, if you think about it, every movie in some, in, in a lot of ways lot of is the, that moment. do that harder. Like mm -hmm. in, uh, I watched Ford versus Ferrari mm. and they were like, you just got to press the gas pedal harder and then you suddenly speed past the other person. Mm. You just gotta, you just gotta gas pedal harder. Yes. What if yeah. I just drive f car better in a race? <laughs> It'll never work. What if I just m shift? I should have. Sh I need mm. to shift harder. I think I know how we win this race. We've been going at eighty miles per hour, but what if we just decide to go at ninety miles per yeah. hour? No. Mm. Yeah. No. I only had this gas pedal pressed down halfway. What if I pushed it all the way? It's amazing how that trope is used over and over again, but yeah. still, every time it's used, there's it's a part of me that's still always just kind of like, fuck you, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> but no, like, totally. You have to add in the trope where it's just like, why are you always pressing it down halfway? It's like, when I was 10 years old, my brother and I pressed it down all the way. He popped. Now... I don't do that anymore. And then it's just like your brother would want you to press down the pedal more. It's just like, you're right. I think that's literally the plot of the first Fast and Furious. Yes. Movie. Really? Yeah. I don't I think, think I've seen the first one. Wow. It's like, because it's like his father's car. And he's just like, I don't drive it. It scares me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at the end, he's like, all end. right, I'll drive it. <laughs> when he does a burnout and a wheelie at the same time, <laughs> which <laughs> is physically impossible. It's, just, no, it's physically impossible great. to do both. You didn't but it's, leave without but again, spot, do you? it's badass. Oh, it's yeah. super badass. Like they had to, they had to literally rig the car because it was real. It's a practical effect. Mm. They had to rig it so that like it would do a burnout and then they had like some kind of piston down below that pushed the car up to do a wheelie. Because I'm guessing the director or somebody or the writer was like, yeah. And then the car <laughs> burns out and then does a wheelie. And then like the special effects people are like, what the hell? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, that's, it's so funny. Like how, how common that trope is in any kind of like racing movie, they shift and then suddenly they go, way faster it's like oh all we gotta do is shift again yep nick cage <laughs> shifting forever <laughs> oh, wait uh, what is that it's it this youtube video someone cut uh gone in si it's gone in 60 seconds right? no it's uh the beginning of the rock oh it's fbi the yeah it's yeah. the beginning of the movie called the rock where and they take this whole chase this chase sequence but they cut it down so it looks like he just steals a car and crashes it within 10 seconds so it's him literally like get out of the car FBI he gets in the car and she's like she's like whoa whoa ah, ah. <laughs> it's just all the it's just all it's the just in all in car him. driving I'm shots of him whoa. just like steering and shifting and then steering and steering and then he just crashes you're going down whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> mr cage we've just had a movie offer sent to your office yes I'll do it. <laughs> you don't, you don't. Yeah. Yes, I'll do it. I don't want to read it. Yeah. I can't do it. I read the script. It's great. You, there's, you don't have a, that's a menu for tender greens on your, on your <gasps> computer. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do the backyard steak. <laughs> Apparently his new movie that just came out is, is good. Is that the one where he plays himself? Well, no, it's the one where it's an, it's aliens, something like. Oh, we didn't what? say we weren't going to see it. Spoiling. Oh, I heard about the one where he play, he's playing himself, but that's yeah. not being filmed yet, right? Or it's it's oh, just I'd, starting. Maybe it's yeah, been so. being filmed for twenty years. It's got to be fun to be Nicolas Cage and just do any movie you want because you're in crippling debt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say because you're in debt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's got to be dope. It's how gotta... how do you end up in debt? In have you seen the like Have his? you seen the tombstone that he already bought? Or what? Yeah, it's well, the, there you it's go. The pyramid. He it's that he bought that pyramid. Well, it turns out mausoleum or something. It turns out when you buy a lot of castles. 
in Europe. Is that right? Is that literally what he it is? Literally. I think, I think that's what happened. So uh, fun fact, guys, if you think about buying a castle, they look cheap on the outset, but it's not the price of the castle that'll get you. It's the taxes and uh, mm, castle fees. Tax. And it's yeah. also Afterwards. feeding the serfs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the serfs may have a cut of what they grow <laughs> yeah. and nothing more. <laughs> So I think he owns a bunch of castles and then because of that Good God. debts mount. I don't understand. That's got to be it's got to be a psychological thing where you just become addicted to being like, "Yes, I can do that." Like, I don't know. I've been in positions before where like I've been broke as a joke, mm -hmm. but spent money on stupid stuff because it's almost like a comfort to myself being like, "See, I I can do whatever." So maybe if you come from not having a lot and then all of a sudden you have a lot you just want to be like yes yes i can do that i never have to worry again i think it's also another thing of like just running costs so mm. so if you're if you've purchased a lot of things and had a lot of things going on you have this monthly cost that it right. takes for your to keep your livelihood up and that's how got it that's how you get the sort of like wesley snipes of the world where mm -hmm. you know or the mc hammers where it's like everything you know, seems affordable, but you have this constant running cost of everything. Your your cost of living from month to month increases. Like I I know this guy that he was, uh, I think he was in oil or something, made a lot of money. Business wasn't so great. Mm -hmm. um, and he was like, and he was like, yeah, um, just to stay afloat, I need to make $40,000 a month. Whoa. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> been studies that people like just for some reason psychologically we adjust to the income we're making. So you you never actually get to I don't know, people aren't good at saving. Like they're yeah. not good at going, "Oh, and and they they're going, "Oh, I'm making this much so I can spend this much." I don't spend money on anything for that very reason. I like, don't spend much money either, I've realized. Yeah. Like we were talking about we were talking about our cars. Yeah. And how my car is garbage. And I I like the car that I have sure in the next couple of years I could afford to get a, a another car but I'm like my car works yeah is my mindset I'm like I'm gonna drive it into the ground because I just don't but I just don't desire anything. yeah I'm like it, it's impractical yeah to me they get to the same place at the same speed especially when you're living in Los Angeles <laughs> like it's all... not if you got a Porsche but you're stuck in traffic like everybody else <laughs> that's what I'm saying and my car is from 2007 and it's had problems for a long time it broke down when I was on a mini personal vacation on top of a mountain uh -huh. a couple weeks ago and I was, thought I was going to be stranded and couldn't get, get back to Smosh for filming because there was like one small garage in the town and it was like well they don't open up until Monday and then it was like it was literally that and so even after being stranded on a mountain because my car broke down down, yeah, I'm still just like, well, it's it's fine. Like, I don't get it. Wouldn't you end up spending more money on fixing this car over and over and over and over yes, and over again? Yes, I would. <laughs> but also, right now, I don't have a car payment, so there's just a part of me that's just like, ah, oh, I don't want to do that. And like, yeah. I'm. I mean, I'm goes. able to save for the first time in a long time and I've been enjoying saving. It feels nice. Like I only spend money on like treating myself to food every once mm -hmm. in a while. So well, is it a situation where you're in the back of your head, you're saving up to potentially like buy a house someday? Or... I would really like Cause that. Cause that's a little but... different. Cause I feel like that's different. Cause then you mm -hmm. are, you are, you're not going, oh, I just don't spend money on anything. You're going, oh, I'm not spending money on these things because I have a That's bigger fair. thing in mind. That's fair. It's just, I think that there's a healthy balance though. Like right after So Random, I had a good amount of money in the bank, but it rent in Los Angeles is so expensive that mm -hmm. even though I was, I did the same thing I'm doing now, I don't spend money. It was gone pretty quickly due to just rent and upkeep mm -hmm. of life stuff, car fixings, different car, still a piece of garbage. You know, now I need to find the balance where it's like, when was the last time I bought new clothes? Mm. All my furniture doesn't match because it's hand-me-downs and I'm fine with that. But like, when was the time I... When I buy new bed sheets, I need a smaller computer table because my room is unnavigable right now. Why can't I do that? I just, I need to find a balance where it's like, it's okay to buy something. Yeah, there is, because I, I, I remember it was a couple months ago where they were getting rid of a, a like not a good couch here in the office. Like it was kind of like dirty and you're like, oh, I'll take that. And I, I remember I looked at it and I was like, Damien, buy yourself a couch. I was, <laughs> like, I was like, you can buy I was yourself. Like, I was like, you it's a little too that. big for my room. It's very dirty, but it's free. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Damien, you can... You can do that. <laughs> but I'm kind of a I'm kind of a hoarder in that way. I've gotten better, but remember when we were roommates? That's what I'd be like. <laughs> well, you are you are the type that you it's the practicality. It's like I'll a find a degree. use for it. Yeah. Where yeah. you're like you're like, "Oh, that'll work. That'll fit." And I'm just like, "But you could also buy yourself something that like works better." Yeah. or whatever but you're like no but this works and I'm like yeah. okay no the funniest thing when we lived <laughs> yeah. together I love uh, this was great cause he came home and you you definitely you've, you're not the same at all like <laughs> not quite because also we weren't 
back in the day when we weren't making any money, the, mm -hmm. it did make more sense. Right. But you came home one time and you had this giant piece of driftwood. But it was a really <laughs> cool, really It was heavy really piece cool looking. And, and he was uh -huh. like, yeah, I found this driftwood. I'm going to use it to like make a shelf or a headboard or, or I yeah. forget what it was. But then it sat in our garage and our garage was filled with tons of stuff that all of us were like, I'm going to get to that at some point. Yeah. Delivery is more than just pizza in 2020. With a selection of your favorite flavors across the globe, you can order world cuisine from the comfort of your living room with DoorDash. When we're having crazy film days, I can just get DoorDash in my favorite restaurant and treat myself. DoorDash brings all of America's flavors to your door, and ordering is easy. You just open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and your food will be delivered to you wherever you are. Not only is your favorite pizza joint already on DoorDash, but there are over 310,000 restaurant partners in 4,000 cities so you might find a new favorite too. With door-to-door -door delivery in all 50 US states, Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can order your local go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Chipotle, Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, and the Cheesecake Factory. Right now, our listeners can get $5 off their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code SMOSH. That's $5 off your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code SMOSH. Don't forget that's code SMOSH for $5 off your first order with DoorDash. I did just have a personal milestone in that department, though. Um, mm -hmm. One of our PAs on set while filming recently was like, uh, he. we were talking about video game stuff, and he's like, yeah, well, I play stuff on computer sometimes, but I don't actually have a console because we would need to hook it up to a TV, and my girlfriend and I don't have a TV. And I was like, ooh, you want a TV? Because if you follow my Instagram stories, sometimes you see I had two TVs, one on top of the other. One of them I used, the other one I didn't. It was like 12 years old, but it was still there. And I was just refusing to get rid of it. So I was like, I'm gonna, I wanna give you this TV. I'm gonna just get rid of it. And in return, he baked me some like, and he and his girlfriend baked me like a little carrot cake thing. But like old Damien would have never done that. It would have been like, well, I kind of need to. One of what if one of them breaks? Like, right. It's funny. You, know. you and I are polar opposites in that fashion. In yeah. Fashion because I love to get rid of stuff. Yeah. I love to have as little as possible. Like this past weekend, even I was like, let me get rid of this book bookshelf mm -hmm. and uh, a bunch of books that I'm just like, you know what? I read these, or I'm I I've had them for years. And I'm not going to read them, so I'm going to get rid of a ton of them. Yeah, but I do that. I do that every every couple months. I get rid of a ton of stuff. It's healthy. Yeah, I just don't clutter your life. I don't like to have things that I don't use. I'm yeah. like, I want to just have the stuff that I need. I could take a page from your book uh, because I I have this like you know those IKEA like four by four like cubbies that you mm -hmm. get and you buy yep. your own. Yeah, so I've had one of those for like years, and I realized recently it takes up so much space in my room. It's not very comfortable. I can't really like lean back too much when like streaming or just at my computer because of that. And I should get rid of it. But I'm like, no, those drawers are filled with things. And literally, there is one drawer I actually go into to get stuff. And it's the mm -hmm. one that houses all my like HDMI cables and computer mm -hmm. stuff. Otherwise, I could that that thing could burn down tomorrow just by itself in a very concentrated fire. And I would not, there's not a single thing I'd be like, oh man, that thing. I should no, just man. get rid of some stuff. Marie Kondo it. Marie Kondo I, that but shit I'm like, is... I like mess. Uh, <laughs> I think that's I think it's also like a you know some people get that takeaway when they when they travel they see how people live with with less because mm -hmm. America we're just used to abundance and it's just like things and stuff mm -hmm. and then you go somewhere else and you're like this is nice like you yeah. don't need you don't need this or that or yeah. this decorative plate or <laughs> this uh, old toy from you know when you were a kid or whatever like yeah yeah. You know, it's yeah. You you put a lot. We put a lot of important. It's for me. It was with books because I and mm -hmm. and I I read this I, like because Marie Kondo does that thing where she's like, get rid of this, get rid of this, and look at books and what books do you want to get rid of? And I remember that part had a lot of controversy. So we were like, don't get rid of books. They're really important stuff. Mm -hmm. And someone said owning a bunch of books isn't a personality trait. And I was like, Ooh. oh, and it like kind of hit because I was like, I'm keeping a lot of books just because I'm like, oh, I love books and I just want a lot of books. And I was like, but these are a lot of books that I don't actually care about. Books yeah. that I read that I didn't even like. Mm -hmm. Why am I keeping it? Other than to just have it there. So it's like, I read that book. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. no, nah, it's, I'd rather have only the books that I but it, love. But dude, you bring a girl home she sees you got a big ass shelf of books. But I know she knows you're literally. I'd rather, I'd Ooh. rather, I'd rather bring someone home and have like a set of books that I love and could talk about okay. so that they go, oh, those books. I'm like, yes, those are my favorite mm -hmm. books. I've read more, but those are my favorites. Mm -hmm. Also, since I live in an apartment and, you know, 
in LA, you move, moving just happens a lot more. I like knowing that when I move, it's not going to be that hard. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. You know what? Thinking about your apartment, that would be the easiest move ever. Moving is never easy, but damn, mm. you've my, done a good I, job. I do not. It. So I've I replaced a lot of my furniture in this past year with like lighter furniture mm. so that I'm just Dang. like, because with that in mind, but also like, it's not like it doesn't look good. It's just like, it works. And it I'm, I just, I like to be half nomad, mm. you know? That was the bit when we did your uh, house tour video. Everyone's like, did Damien really steal Shane's table and chairs? And it's like, well, yes, but I, also I was, I, I agreed it was stoked to like get rid of stuff. Before, beforehand, I was like, well, yeah, we had planned on you taking all that stuff for a while. So I was like, why don't I just and steal I was like, it for the video? Just, yeah, let's yeah. just do this. Yeah. Is that too inside baseball? No, no. no. Behind the no. scenes. Of course. Huh. People probably thought you just brought it right back, but. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's, in, it's in my home. So. And I do own that many candles. He really does. It's true. He's, he's, he's a candle love. boy. Love, love candles. candles. Candles are great. The wrestling is great. You guys, you guys feel like. You're going to go to more wrestling matches. You were saying at the end that you might be like, you could see yeah. yourself getting into it. I like doing, I like passion. Mm -hmm. I like when people are passionate about a thing. And like, I know you like cars. So if you were ever like, Damien, I want to show you this really cool car related thing. Even if it's not my thing, I would love doing that. Right. Same thing. If Matt Robb was just like, yeah, we're all going to this wrestling event and invited me along. I'd be super down. Yeah. Um, I think I, th I feel the same way yeah. with, with wrestling. It's, it's as long as you have somebody that's there, that's, yeah. That's enthusiastic about it, and they're not a snob about yeah. it, and they're just like they're they're welcoming you into their totally. passion and sharing it with you and explaining the things that you don't understand, and you're kind of like yeah. they're cheering. Along Show with me it. why this is amazing! I can't yeah. wait to see. Yeah, and Mari and Matt were so into it. Like in it's, infe element. it's infectious to yeah. not. Yeah, like they're pumped about it. They were so happy, and also there's just so much crowd participation. Mm -hmm. in, oh yeah, in the in, at wrestling, like yeah, everyone is just so involved in it. Like you said with like Brock Lesnar, where everyone's like, F you, because ah, nobody yeah, likes boo. Brock Lesnar. He's a human rhino, and like he was, he literally is. <laughs> and like, what's fun is like they play, like they participate. Whereas like in sports, they're doing their best to ignore the crowd for the right. most part. Mm -hmm. Whereas whereas like when Brock Lesnar got thrown out, and everyone's just like. You suck, you or whatever, and he like he's looking at the crowd. He's just like, he's like stop, be quiet, he's like, like, shut up. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like great, and I'm like, and I know he's playing along with it, of or course. like like Roman Reigns stands up, but like there's a wrestler like sneaking up behind him. And he's like, Roman behind you, <laughs> look out, Roman. Look out, Roman. <laughs> it's yeah. it's definitely, and like you find yourself doing it. I will by the end. I will say the one thing that kind of confused me is so. Random thing, I auditioned for a WWE related voiceover thing way back in the day. So I researched a lot of these characters like right when I was starting out. We're talking like seven years ago. Um, and so seeing them now, like these characters undergo changes and evolution and all that stuff. And there's one called Daniel Bryan, who's mm, known for yeah. being like, he just dresses like he didn't know there was a match that day. <laughs> yeah. He's just like his a normal thing is that he's dude. He's a normal guy. He's a normal guy, but he's positive. So his word is yes. And it's all about the yes movement. So everyone's yeah. just like, yes, yes, Daniel Bryan. So watching his evolution now, they've paired him against this uh, other wrestler called The Fiend, or it's someone's like alter ego where it's like it's supposed to be a literal demon that just torments him. But from what I've seen, there is such little wrestling that actually happens between them. Daniel Bryan just gets the snot kicked out of him for like 15 straight minutes just being whipped with leather. And every once in a while, he'll just look up and be like... Huh, like he's really thinking like maybe I do have it in me to get it back up but but in the audience is like here for it but he also keeps losing so when he finally lost again this time I was like what did I just watch this was like a snuff well, that's, film well that's to set up that's to set up further like it's a continuous yeah. storyline that continues forever because yeah. I, I think there I was think no when... like back and forth though there wasn't like a pull of like is he gonna do it this time he just got hit on the ground yeah. with 15 minutes with rocks just like <laughs> hitting, it, hitting him on the head with rocks not I think really when but. I think when I went, uh, the fiend showed up and kicked his ass. Uh, yeah. So, like, <laughs> That's but it was, it. but it was like really confusing. No, it was. I think it was somebody else. But it was just like really confusing. But I think like, that's part of Daniel Bryan's bit. Maybe is that as yeah. a, like he's the underdog who's going to keep getting the crap beaten out. But you want to see the underdog he also just looks like But he will eventually. Yeah. He, he also will just looks eventually like, uh, be the fiend. He looks like a uh, homeless Mormon. That's how I what would What a explain. specific That's sentence. accurate. <laughs> uh, if it, look, if it turned, if, if it goes a couple more matches or years and he just keeps losing and then the Fiend's like, well, I'm retiring and I'm the champion. I, then then I would agree. But I think, they're, I think they're having him keep beating him so that people are like, 
wow, the, he's going to keep beating him. So that the match where Daniel Bryan does win, it's like, oh my God, he finally and did he it. he chooses to believe be, harder. But that's the thing. They start off the match every time with him being like, this time I'm believing harder. And you guys are the ones who fueled this movement, the yes movement of positivity. And I was like, yeah, yes. Like, so that moment's already there. He has to get close sometimes for us to be like, I thought oh, he, got, he got close a couple times. For like one minute out of the 30 that he was just getting his whip. Shit rocked look look <laughs> damien we're wrestling fans <laughs> yeah. i know i guess we are now but i was there just like go. damn that's like, how it happens it's it's not like a rivalry thing it's not a back and forth thing he's just getting bullied yeah i don't know wow. i will also say like i know like that they plan it out but man they do actually get thrown mm-hmm. the hell around yeah there's some stuff where i was like that definitely could have broken and there was a couple times also where they like those wrestlers would like walk off and you're like that guy's actually hurt yeah that person got messed up and the craziest thing is then they get in a plane and and fly to a different town and and do do it it the next day oh they literally have something tonight yeah um after that show that we saw last night i don't know how like they are without a doubt like athletes but they're Mm -hmm. all they're all like they're all really nice people and they're mm. all huge nerds. Yeah. Is yeah. what blows my mind. Every single wrestler that I've met has been really, really sweet, like mm-hmm. sweet people. Yeah. And they're dorks. Like we talked yeah. to, uh, who's the wrestler that we, or the guy that we Xavier. talked to? Uh, well, Xavier, Xavier yeah. Woods, but okay, we were also, uh, we were talking to um, at, uh, Up, Up, Down, Down oh. about Dark Souls and everything. Yes. Um, Adam Cole, was that the name? Yeah. Or no. Uh, I can't remember. They were it looks all... like he could be related to you and Tanner. Yeah. <laughs> but but they all like, they all love video games. They, a yeah. lot of them love anime or yeah. comic books and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, because yeah. if you think about it, all those guys grew up as wrestling fans. Mm-hmm. They were they were fans themselves. Yeah. And then they had a dream to become wrestlers and they were one of the many few that actually made it. Right. Yeah. But yeah, New Day, all those guys are Love New total, Day. total nerds. Such nerds. Oh, yeah. It's funny because Matt Robb has always told me there's like such a crossover between Smosh fans and wrestling fans. And I've always believed it, but never in my life have I gotten so many tweets and messages at the same time from a single event. A like people have seen stuff before and been like, hey, I've seen you on this thing. But like my feed was just flooded with people being like, is that you behind the as an outside? Yeah. And so I liked as many as I could. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Smosh wrestling fans, we out here. Yeah. Are you a, are you a wrestling boy? Uh, no, I'm, I'm. I think I'm on the same page as as y'all. Where mm. it's just I don't know a whole lot about it, mm. but I can I can appreciate it. A, a part of me wants to watch more of it, but it's the same with um. For me, it's the same with like NBA. Where for the past couple of years, I've been like, God, I want to watch more basketball games. It's just hard to add another thing to be a fan of when I'm like, yeah. I just don't have the time. Like I'm a huge. I love TV and movies yeah. and and football, and I'm like adding another sport. Yeah. I just, I just can't. Well, it's also like, ongoing. And there's like a storyline that you yeah. do. Like, you really like have with to basketball, to it. With basketball, it's like, oh, did they win or did they lose? Yeah. Who scored more points? Right. Did anyone get injured? And there you have it. That's mm-hmm. your update. But with this, it's like, well, this guy said this thing about him backstage. But what you didn't know is that her brother got beaten up outside the there's, arena by this mm-hmm. guy's friend. There, and mm-hmm. there's a lot to it. Because, yeah, <laughs> it, was, so it, was, much. it was towards like the middle of the match when Brock Lesnar was throwing a bunch of people around. And then this guy, Drew McIntyre, gets in which everybody like knew and was like oh my god and he gets in and they look at each other and drew mcintyre goes i've been waiting for this moment for a long time you son of a bitch and i'm just like what Whoa. what <laughs> what's this <laughs> yeah. yeah so i'm like there's a lot going on and then this guy uh which everybody who watches wwe knows this but all of a sudden like the announcement of like another contender and this guy named edge comes out and mm-hmm. everybody freaks the hell out and i was like who you could feel who is this and matt rob was like he's been retired for or he's been out for 13 years i'm like Whoa. so you really have to be committed yeah for a long time yeah because i was yeah. like bro like football you can hop into the next season and be like okay great but yeah. you cool imagine is- brett Favre just showed up for a game he's <laughs> yeah. like i'm yeah. back it kind of did back, it kind of low-key happened it's yeah. what it is but- so well, the cool thing about the Royal Rumble, too, is, um, you know, like I said, every two minutes someone comes out. So they'll put up a countdown of 10 seconds, like nine, eight. And then they don't show the person right away. You'll hear their signature intro music start. Mm-hmm, right. And then it pops up on screen. So it's this moment of just like I saw one of the announcer guys sort of look back at the audience to be like, oh, he's about to check our reaction. Someone big is coming. I know this. And then yeah. Edge's music starts. I forget how it goes. But you just hear the first couple notes. And all of a sudden, everyone's like, oh. <gasps> 
blah, blah, I mean, blah. people were freaking <laughs> people out. Were, but I got, I got. It's got to be cool. Like if people like Matt Robb, I know goes to a lot of, like the indie scene mm-hmm, wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and which is and literally absolute like absolute craziness. Mm. But he loves it, and he says it's even like he likes it even more in some ways. But like the guy who won the Royal Rumble, Matt Robb was like, "Yeah, I saw him in a local wrestling match like." two years ago. And I'm like, that's gotta be that's cool to crazy. watch people go from like, just seeing them in a small venue mm-hmm, yep. in LA and see them blow up to the national level. That's gotta be a lot totally. of fun yeah. to follow it like that. I'm like, that's that's cool. A lot, a lot of things to be a fan of. What are you guys, what are you guys a fan of right now in terms of books or movies or anything like that? Oh, good question. Ooh, well, just stuff. Just stuff. Stuff. Um, just stuff. You know, Damien was watching this anime that he told me. And now to, you're past watch. Right now I think I watched more uh, mm-hmm. cause it's way up my alley. Uh, it's called Vinland Saga, and it's just Vikings. It's literally, it's literally Vikings, <laughs> yeah. like the the History Channel show, but it's anime, and it's very From grounded. From what I can tell, there's like no magic, nothing special. It's like grounded. Like if someone gets stabbed, like oops, that's it. Like it's a yeah, which is cool. It adds mm-hmm. stakes. It's pretty mm. cool. Then I'm sometimes this. they stab people with them. Yeah, stakes or make people out of. Them. No, so you're thinking of vampires, and that's vampires. already no. way too magic. It's not magic mm, at all. No, no, no. Do they skip the whole the not so good things that Vikings do? If you catch my from drift? what I can tell, they don't no. Sh- they don't show that stuff, but yeah. they don't. They don't like, show the Vikings. Like yeah. all the characters are garbage humans. Yeah, because like yeah. Vikings, they're they're all like, yes, I like killing. <laughs> There's yeah. like one we or two people enjoy that you're rooting for who are sort of like victims of circumstance without spoiling too much. Mm-hmm. And then everyone around it is just like, wow, what a massive gray area you occupy all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's what makes it interesting because you don't have that typical like, this guy's the hero and we like them the most. Mm. But again, you're farther than I am, so I don't know. But no. Leif Erikson is literally a character that shows up in the first <laughs> episode. Literally, it's like, hi, it's me, Leif Erikson or Leif Erikson. And I don't know how to say. Yeah. yeah. No, all the characters are brutal. Vinland Saga? Vinland Saga. I recommend it. Yeah. All right. Um, and it's then Amazon uh, Prime. Ah, oh, damn. And then um, you have Prime. I don't have Prime. You don't have Prime? I don't have Prime. You've got to be the only person I've ever met who doesn't have Prime. Yeah, I don't have what Prime. What do you do when you need uh, two day shipping? I go to a f- store and buy it. You leave your house? Yeah, and I don't have to wait two days. I feel bad. So I have this All Might statue now on my desk. Little uh, side note. And All Might is a character from an anime that we all love. I have a little statue for my desk and that's my first bit of desk decoration. And I went to a local comic shop to get it because I had seen it in their window before. So I was like, yes, support the locals. And I, when I showed up and I was like, hey, do you still have that All Might statue? They look at each other and they go, we sold it an hour ago. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, well, Amazon bye. it is. Yeah, it yeah, sucked. It sucks. But I was like, man, that's too bad. Like, yeah. and they didn't do anything wrong. But I, I tried. I tried. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't buy things online. I'm a luddite. Is it um, out of like principle? You just want to support local stuff, or is it just you know it's just not your thing? I'm often the same, but it's out of uh, impatience. Mm. Like I'll just run to Best Buy and get it. Yeah, support I, I just your don't... local mom and pop Best Buy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not helping anything. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. Like, I just don't, I don't feel the need to buy things online. Literally, the last thing that I bought online, which I don't, and I don't buy things online, but last thing I bought online were were these movie posters. They're, some people might have seen this this thing on Twitter. In the country of Ghana in Africa, Mm -hmm. between like 1970 and 2000. Mm-hmm. Basically, there was a, there was a lot of factors that led to this, but basically, the, the government banned printing presses to avoid dissent. I guess it was it was hard to get like movie materials. There was these sort of mobile movie theaters that would go around to like the rural areas of Ghana and they would show movies. But since they didn't have access to the movie posters, they would hire local artists. Oh, I have to, seen this. Yeah, yeah, to paint movie posters. Thing is. They didn't always have, they didn't always like watch the movie Mm -hmm. or really know what the movie was. So sometimes they painted these posters and they look, they do not represent the movie at all. That's awesome. There's one for uh, Mrs. Doubtfire that I saw (laughs) that has, it has Mrs. Doubtfire ramming a broomstick through a guy's head. And there's like blood everywhere. What? That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, so wait, so you got some of these? I read the article and I immediately went to eBay. Of course you did. And bought four. Are they like legit from that time? Yes. Oh my God. That's incredible. So, 
I bought one uh, that was, no, these ones aren't as, they're not as funny as like the Mrs. Doubtfire one. Sure. Because those ones people scooped up already. But they're all original pieces of art. um, And they aren't because of the, I'm guessing the weather uh, that, you know, Printing on paper wasn't conducive to what they needed. So mm-hmm. what they did was they stitched flower bags together and then painted awesome. on those. Awesome. Cool. So it is a six-foot poster. What? Yeah. It's a six-foot poster, each of them. I got one that's uh, True Lies. Amazing. Which I gifted to Finnerty. Oh, cool. Um, it, Arnold Schwarzenegger's face. For some reason, the faces, they're not too good at the faces. They're good at like drawing muscles. I mean, they're all different artists, but... Sometimes the faces just look bad. Uh, I, I got, uh, since Mari's a big uh, The Rock fan, sure. I found one for Walking Tall. Okay, where solid. The the painting work is actually really good, but he looks a little Guatemalan. Okay, <laughs> specific. That's very specific. I got one uh, for Matt Rob, because I, I, I hit him up and I was like, hey, if you were to get some sort of movie memorabilia from these possible things. So uh, I got him a poster of Three Ninjas. Oh, of course you got that one. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got uh, Enter the Dragon. For yourself? For now. For now. Uh, No, it is is Bruce Lee like doing a pose (laughs) and his face looks terrible. Hell yeah. And they spelled his name wrong, which is like my favorite part. Oh my God. The Bruce is it B R U S E? Is that like what? No, they what did L I I. Oh, so okay, not bad. Wait, but you're telling me you did this online? Why didn't you support your local Ghanaian um, movie poster shop? Painter from the '70s. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, real, sorry. real low of you. I know. Yeah. I know. Real, real Why don't you go to Best up, Buy dude. and see what you can find? That's true. Otherwise. <laughs> Unlike me, who goes to Walmart? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was a. That, it's just a funny. It's 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 a part. It's part prank because I feel like by gifting these, they feel like they have to put them up somewhere in their house. A six foot it's tall. It's more of a poster. curse <laughs> that you yes. put, <laughs> yeah. cast upon them. Yep. Yeah, how's that going to work for you? You have a cat. I mean, if it's stitched flower bags, well, and I'm you have assuming a cat, it's in a frame. Is it going to f- climb a up a six foot frame? Mm, I never thought about that. See, you think about cat stuff. Yeah. I don't. You could probably put I it do. in a. You can get a six foot glass frame. Oh my god, that's probably expensive. six feet. Movie is... movie posters come in, and I mean movie posters are no, uh, much smaller than that. But you can definitely get one. It'll cost a lot, but it's gonna yeah. be very expensive. Yeah. But also, if it's on the wall, like, is a cat gonna look at that on the wall and jump? I don't up know into where it? I'm gonna hang a six foot movie poster in my house. Yes, it's gigantic. Yes. I don't know. My cats have gotten a lot better about it, but they used to try to like climb up the curtains and oh, Zelda yeah. is fat But the curtains hell. go down to the floor. So if this is like hung up a little, a little bit, bit higher. But how tall are his ceilings? You've got, you could put it in like the, the stairway area probably. I don't want to look at it that much. <laughs> what have you done to yourself? It's a, it's a little cursed. Like they're, they're a little cursed. Cursed like, images? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cause like, cause I, I just, I just gave it to Matt Robb and he's like, I had no idea how demonic these children's faces look oh, no. on this poster like they like one kid's eyes are just black that's awesome. phenomenal <laughs> that's awesome. that sounds so cool though one of them they could be yeah. cursed you don't know yeah they mm-hmm. they've been around for a couple of decades yeah like that's that gives enough time for for curses to be laid upon them but i think it's just i think it's just such a cool little because I like I like history stuff, so mm. I think it's just like a cool like three ninjas bit of like movie history. <laughs> historical documentary. Yeah, guys, I cherish sleep very much. And you know what? I didn't get much when I went on tour it was sleep because our mattress was six inches thick and in a moving van. But you know what would have been great is a sleep number mattress. <laughs> sleep is vital for healthy living. It strengthens immunity, increases the ability to focus, sharpens cognitive function, and improves physical health and emotional well-being. Only at sleep number stores do they have individual fit technology that helps you discover comfort for you and your partner. You can visually see your body's pressure points on a Sleep Number 360 smart bed. Nine out of 10 couples prefer different mattress firmness. From feather soft to firm, you can adjust each side to your Sleep Number setting, so it's just right for both of you. Discover proven quality sleep and save 50% on the 360 limited edition smart bed now during the Ultimate Sleep Number event. Only at Sleep Number stores or sleepnumber.com slash cadence. That's sleepnumber.com slash C-A-D-E-N-C-E. 
One thing, I really like this about you, Ian. You're excited about this thing and you're telling us about this thing and mm. you ordered four of them yeah. and you're like, so I gave this one to this person, this mm. one to that person. Like, that's your instinct. You seem to be a very gifty man. I don't usually do gifts. <laughs> No, I, I no, I'm, that's wrong. Well, I'm usually no, 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 no. idiot. That's very, no. I guess I mean <laughs> no, I like to fine. yeah. I don't know. Like I, I I saw it and I was like, oh, this would be kind of a funny. I don't know how much I was doing it for me or doing it for them because there is something really funny to forcing somebody <laughs> to put a giant, terribly painted three ninjas poster in their house. I mean, you know, Matt, you have to, Matt Rob loves that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know Infinity what you have to do now is do schedule it. hangouts with them within two weeks and just be like, "So where do you where'd you end up putting it?" Oh yeah, they that's have to. Rough. Do it. Yep, that's rough. Yep. Infinity's got uh got a family. I hope it scares them. Yeah, I don't because <laughs> I was like child. I was like do you I was like would you want this because I don't want to force it on anybody. Right. But if they take it, they better damn well. What put movie it up did somewhere. you get him again? True Lies. Okay. True Lies. Yeah. Arnold his, Schwarzenegger. His son is just terrified of Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, Arnold's face is a little bit. A little bit messed up in the. In you watched that Jamie Lee Curtis movie? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know the the last thing I splurged on hmm. was actually it was a it was a couple weeks ago. Um, I decided to finally get an Oculus Quest. That's great. Oh, dude, I've been looking for that freaking thing. I can't find to, it. You anywhere. just have to order it, and it's uh, you have so to order it online. Uh, <sighs> so I ordered it a while ago, and. By the time this pod comes out, it still might not have gotten. It's just wow. it takes a while. Like it's like you you order it, and it comes to you in like two months. Yeah, because I kept checking Best Buy. I just, no, they're never they're, gonna have it. Out. You have to yeah. order it from the website, and <sighs> uh, it's gonna take a minute. But I was just yeah. like, you know what? It, it's about time I get one because mm-hmm. I love it. You've been talking about it, and I'm, I'm happy I know, that I you think, did. I think it's I think it's that fear of of becoming the person who's home alone in their apartment just in VR. Day in and we're day not out. Oh, we're not, we're on, not, not on the quest either. It's not very good. You made the wrong choice. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> the quest is like a very like it's arcade game type stuff, mm-hmm. which is so it's very temporary games, but like super hot. I could play for hours. Totally. But, yeah. But that's okay. Like, and no, also. No, no, no. I know. I know. I'm just like, yeah. you know. I remember when uh, PlayStation VR first came out and I would go over to Joe's place. We got a mutual buddy named Joe. Hi, Joe. Um, and he, <laughs> he's, he's, he's not listening. Um, <laughs> and we would just play like Fruit Ninja for a few yeah. hours. Like it was it's a lot fun. of fun. It's but, dumb fun. Yeah. But that was, you know, it's, a, it's pricey. It's like 400 bucks, something like that. Something like that, yeah. yeah. But, Dang, uh, but Daniel. It's great. I love that stuff. It's a lot cheaper than buying a different kind of VR thing and having yeah. to pay for the PC that goes exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah. Like, and I like it because I can travel with it. Yep. Mm. Like if you're staying in a hotel somewhere, I'm like, just pop that on. Yeah, yeah baby. It's really cool. Bring that on the bring that on the tour bus. I mean, I know I'm not going to have it. I day. wonder how that motion will work with you being on a tour bus. I wonder if oh. it will consider that you're moving. No, I don't think so. Maybe. I, really I think it has to do with like, hot. I think it bases it all off the floor that you then connect it to. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, that's my one thing that's holding me back from VR. I would want to get one of the ones attached to my computer because I do do gaming stuff on my PC, but like I don't have room. And even so, like Mark has a quest, uh, Matt's Matt's brother, my roommate Mark, um, he has a quest and he'll just chill with it downstairs sometimes. But even then I'll like be down there and I'll have to be like, hey man, you got a cat coming at your feet in a couple seconds here. And you know, just like don't step on my cat daughter. I think as long as you have like a good like, eight foot square area which i barely have mm-hmm. then you're fine because yeah. you can set it up for but there that. are those other ones that you have to set up and they have like sensors in the corners of the room so it literally yeah, maps well, out the space that's a lot See, that's, but that's what work. i want that's, that's fun too much work. Have the, the quest is it. just simple enough for me yeah. and i'm also ordering it and a month later animal crossing comes out and oh my god i focus on. i can't wait uh, why you're obsessed with animal crossing i forget <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> we, we talked about this on the trip. Uh, Shane, what are your thoughts on like siblings and Animal Crossing? Okay, <laughs> so I have a this yeah funny little dumb Animal Crossing story. I was talking about when her uh, it was yesterday. Where I was talking about Animal Crossing and how I've been obsessed with that game series since I was young. When it came out for GameCube, nobody really, not many people bought it back then. Like, at least not- states away, there I was waiting to be your friend playing (laughs) Animal Crossing. In Arizona, (laughs) I was the only person I knew playing it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, maybe I was like 11, 12 at the time. No, even younger. No, around, yeah. But uh, anyways, I remember playing it and my friends coming over and being like, what's this game? And I was like, "Uh, so you are, you're you're a guy and you move to a town where all your neighbors are animals and but so you're in debt and you have to fit <laughs> you fish and um you can pick up fruit and if you 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 can do favors for your animal neighbors and if you do that they might give you wallpaper <laughs> <laughs> just, 
<laughs> if you describe God, Animal so Crossing, funny. it's the dumbest game, but it's somehow the most addictive game on the planet. It's a lot and of fun. nothing happens. Nothing happens. There are zero stakes. Wow. Less I, less stakes than Minecraft. I think it paved the way for games like Stardew Valley and things like that. I mean, obviously Harvest Moon came before all of it, but like right. casual games just to have an experience. I think sometimes we lose track of what a game is supposed to be and mm -hmm. you know nothing wrong with those like really intense really serious games and there's yeah. pvp and all that stuff but it's just nice to sit down and be like oh my neighbor might give me wallpaper like i remember when i was a youngster i had that like ability to connect the um game boy advance to my gamecube um and i also had that like e-reader there was like a card reader for it and i bought one pack of animal crossing cards and i would sent, spend like a day swiping the same card so that bruce the eagle would send me a stereo system with which I figured out was the most expensive thing that a friend could send me. Oh, and then I would just make a crap ton of money and be like, smart. time to like make my own museum in my house. No stakes, nothing mattered. It you was just, just do fun. whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. I love the games where you have to collect stuff. They mm -hmm. get me. They're yeah. satisfying. Um, yeah, there's a good lineup of video games this year, man. Yes. And there, there's, I, we got a break right now, but Animal I'm Crossing so comes out. I'm so sad Cyberpunk got delayed. I'm no. stoked. I'm glad. But, but I'm but I'm glad. It, I'm yeah. glad they're doing it. But well, okay, this might be a call in it. Oh, are we Should calling I do it? A call in Let's it? do mm. calling it. All right, sorry. What's your calling it? Uh, my calling it. Cyberpunk is going to be a letdown. So, dude, I planned my calling it. My calling it is that Final Fantasy VII remake is going to be a letdown. Ooh, y'all! Mm. I think, me. and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's a jinx. But I have a feeling Final <laughs> Fantasy VII remake is going to come out, and people are going to be like, you know, we should have just let it be a classic. Yeah. That's going to be my fear. I, and I don't think it's going to be bad. I think yeah. it's going to be mediocre. I think it's going to be like just a, like same level or a little bit worse than Final Fantasy 15. I'm going to jump on both of y'all's calling it. Okay. And you're going to say they're both amazing. Uh, not quite. No, I'm not that qu not quite that contradictory. Final Fantasy 7 is set up to fail no matter what. Because I can think of no other game that is remembered as fondly as that like it's literally like what's your favorite band the beatles like it's what's your favorite game well this 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 in final fantasy 7 of course everybody has such good nostalgic memories of it and it, even if you don't if you never played it you've heard about so you know how good it is so with this remake there are going to be changes the gameplay style is completely different you are oh. also no longer eight years old in your room yes. during summer break and have all day to play it and just yes. get lost in it it's going to be different it, the battle system from what i can tell is more like Final Fantasy 15 or like a Kingdom Hearts, whereas we were used to that turn-based strategy thing, which is also not a format that works in the modern oh, day. Oh, it's real time now? Very much. Yeah, it's real time. Ooh. Like it's literally moving in 3D and you know, there's they've shown things in the trailer that aren't quite, you know, familiar from the past game. So like, I think it's going to be a great game, but I don't think there's a single damn thing that they could do to please the fans. So I think it's going to get good critic reviews. It's going to get horrible audience reviews and it will be a good game. That is okay. my calling it. I think that's I think that's pretty I think that's decent. Fair. I think it's a pretty decent calling it. Mm. You yeah. think Cyberpunk is going to be let down? I don't know if I can get on that just because the footage that, that forty minutes of gameplay that I saw looks so impressive. But it's it, there's a lot of factors. I mean, I, it could be bad. That forty minutes, while I sucked up every moment of it, I was not. I was not impressed. I also have like, a hard time believing that the people who made Witcher 3 could make a bad game. It's there is like one how, major... Oh, sorry. What? There's one major difference there. Um, Witcher has so much book lore to go off of, which is interesting, but... But, but isn't Witcher 3 completely their own story? Yes, but mm. they built it off of that kind of stuff in the yeah. first place. Cyberpunk has... It was like its own D&D &D kind of deal. Mm. So they have like lore books to go off of, but not stories necessarily yeah. mm. but sorry i cut you right off i really like the writing of the witcher i thought that was i thought that was really fun in the game i mm -hmm. thought you know there's well-written characters it seemed like cyberpunk is just it's it's coming off like really edgy with like oh shit, i gotta get this gun oh f you <laughs> and if it just it just seemed it just it's just coming off a little a little too like edgy where i think maybe when cyberpunk comes out if I was 17, it would be my favorite game. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's not going to have the same kind of adult appeal as The Witcher. And I feel like the reason it got delayed and who knows, but I think they've created such a massive game. They're loading a game with stuff. And I'm worried it's going to be too complicated. Yeah. Mm. And we're just, or just, there's just, a, there's just going to be a lot of stuff, a lot of tasks. And it's, and it won't be focused enough to deliver like a good 
a good, interesting narrative. And when a game promises too much, like you could do anything, you could do this, you could do that. Yeah. Like, I think a good example is like uh, Deus Ex, and sorry for the people that don't play video games, this is gonna be too annoying maybe. Huh. But for Deus Ex, like, they had the same kind of thing where like you could do anything like you could go stealth you could go uh you could hack you can just go and shoot everyone mm -hmm. there were open world elements to it but a lot of the missions were sort of like hallways with with alternate routes mm -hmm. where it was it was a little bit more focused in, right in the gameplay i'm just a little i'm a little worried that we're just going to get a game that has a lot of stuff it I, has like some good stuff in it, but a lot of monotony. That could definitely be a drawback, but I could also see it being an advantage. And actually hearing you say that is something that's gotten me a little bit more excited about the game because I... First of all, I'm a little biased. I really like fantasy settings. So if it is The Witcher, if it's Skyrim, you feel like you're able to just, I want to be in this world, this forest and there's dragons and yeah. caves with treasures. This is like a city setting. It's metropolitan, it's cyberpunk. So mm -hmm. that could be one thing that turns me off about it. But if they do make it more, if they are going to go off of the sort of D&D &D aspect of it and you are making kind of your own character and your own story, there are aspects of like Fallout and Skyrim, which are pretty universally loved games that have that kind of stuff where you can do anything but there's focus within it like mm -hmm. skyrim it's just like you can join the dark brotherhood or the thieves guild or the uh you can become a shield brother and that yeah. kind of stuff and you can do all of it if you want but like it might be the kind of thing that we keep remaking characters and being like okay this one i'm gonna play all thiefy yeah. and if that's the case i think it'd be great yeah you're, to you're totally right because i I think I'm also just trying to hype myself down because I am very hyped up. Yeah, and, it's been hyped and dude, a lot. I f so hard with with cyberpunk like uh, style, same. like really? altered altered carbon. Oh, it's not my thing Bla at all. Blade oh, Runner, wow. like oh my it. god, just pump that sh into my veins. Cool. I love cool. it. So and there hasn't so been really very, like a big game in that type of setting. Well, there's Deus Ex kind of. Right. Like I they guess that's they it. kind of skitter along that that line and I was yeah. like, "Yes, baby. Yes." Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully we're wrong, but uh I hope so. if and we're I, right, I, that means Last of Us Part 2 going to be game of the year. Yeah, mm -hmm. or Animal Crossing coming out in March. Animal Crossing will never win game of the year, even if it is. The problem is that anybody anybody who's going to be playing it is not going to want to leave their console for long enough to vote for it yeah so yeah. i just want to know when the next strand type game is gonna come out mm, you know yeah let's see that next strand type game <laughs> video game game jima video game, video jima. game jima. a lot of people game who jima. play that game really defend it spencer defends that game yeah wholeheartedly games are just not for everybody all the time so sometimes the same thing where you're like wow this is art and i'm really enjoying it someone might be like this isn't at all what i thought i think that's some of the difficulty that comes with the like the enigma that hideo kojima creates around himself if you guys don't know that's the person that used to do all the metal gear solid games because when you're trying to be like we don't even know what this game is yet you're gonna whatever then people make up in their own minds what they want it to be and when it's not that you're gonna please a very specific and small group of people I, I, it makes me it reminds me there's so much content out there that i realize i don't ever allow myself to play a game that i know is considered bad mm. going into it and same with tv yeah. shows but i think it's why the witcher did so good was because it was finally a show that was popular enough and everyone was watching it it's not a like critically acclaimed great show right it is it is yeah it is for wishy-washy on it, it it's mm -hmm. it's not but it also is a very imperfect show but that's kind of why it's so fun mm -hmm. and Dude, it was finally I like loved uh, show. But, no i loved it but i hadn't loved a like not great show in so long because i hadn't mm. watched one because yeah. there's so much stuff there's such a, i have such a large queue of shows that are apparently so good yeah. that I got to keep watching them. But they're they're also like very similar in style where it's like very slow paced and subtle, whatever. And then I'm like, I don't get to watch something that's like a popcorn thing or play a game that's also like yeah. not perfect like every yeah. now and then. That's why I enjoy Danganronpa so much because the people who love it flip and love it. But like its reviews are like good, but it's mm -hmm. not like 10 out of 10 perfect game. It was like, none of my friends play this except for Kevin now. What's up, Kevin? We're going to talk about it. But like, none of my friends play this. It's not something I'm going to connect with a bunch of people on. It's just for me. You know, yeah, it came yeah, out a few yeah. years ago. It's not the coolest thing. I can't. Yeah, but it's... Yeah. That was the, Witcher, when... the Witcher was the biggest surprise for me. The, really? the Netflix show. I mean, man, so it's good. and it's it's. I think maybe by this time the pods come out, it's the most like the most watched first season on Netflix. They also there is a thing about that, not to poo poo it, but they Netflix changed the way they started reporting their numbers. It used to be oh. like a certain percentage watch. Now it's like if you watch two minutes of something, it counts as a full view because nobody accidentally watches two Lame. minutes. So 
you know, it is, I think it did do better than Stranger Things, but it's sort of the same kind of thing where like 80,000 becomes 1 million and right. it's the same statistics. Also, they complete, also yeah. Netflix completely controls their own statistics and they right. don't share them with anybody. That's, so oh. they can say whatever the hell they want mm-hmm. for for publicity purposes. Sure. But an- anecdotally, everyone I know who watched it loves it. I like love people it. are obsessed with it. And yep. uh, it was really, it was a different viewing experience than I've had in a while. Yeah. Hmm. It was like, a, it was it was fantasy Fast and the Furious. I will say though, wow. I will say though, that dragon stuff. That, that, that episode was my least yeah, favorite. Corny. But, okay. but like it, the talk, talking it felt dragon. Like it, it felt like an 80s TV show yeah. with better graphics. It felt like Dragonheart. It yeah. literally was like, it's like, what's up? I'm here. I'm the main guy. I'm going to have sex with women. And it's just kind of like awesome. <laughs> cool, man. Hell yeah, yeah. I'm down for this. I am the last dragon. <laughs> that was, that got, uh, I was like, Ugh. Well, you know what? Yeah. The show is still figuring yep. itself out. Yep. And I don't think season two is going to be anything like season one because of the way the story is going and time I'm excited, line man. is going. So I'm stoked. I'm excited too. I just think like, I think it was them throwing a lot of stuff at the wall, being like, even if 75% of these episodes are winners, we got a good one on our hands. Let's and that see what sword happens. fight in the first episode is dope. It's, it's great. insane. Still want them to make a Metroid TV show. Oh, someone told me about uh, the other day. Uh, it was, uh, they like in chat said, check out the Metroid the movie on YouTube. Apparently someone did like a fan version of it and it's uh, literally what you're talking about. Oh, cool. Mm, yeah. Hell yeah. I haven't looked at it yet, so it could be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> probably the worst. Probably a lie. Probably Pro- everyone's Probably got a hundred views. <laughs> <laughs> literally a kid with the camera and his cat's dressed up in an orange hey, jumpsuit. Damn, Sam is. I mean, a lot, of those, a lot of those fan, those fan movie things are just like I, little... I, have, a, I have a hard time with them sometimes. <sighs> sometimes they're great I respect, though. I respect like the work that yeah. yeah, put into yeah, yeah. it. But then it just comes, sometimes it just comes off as like a weird, like awkward cosplay thing. Mm. Speaking of Altered Carbon really quick. Altered Carbon. Oh, what's so up? So by the time, by the time altered this podcast carbon. comes out. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't, that's actually really funny. That's, that's what Matt, Matt would say. Like, <laughs> just oh. for Altered I don't think Carbon. A, anyways, uh, that comes out technically the new season, season two comes out. Um, a week after this podcast comes out, Altered Carbon comes. They yeah, that's right, two? and it's with uh, Captain. Well, uh, I've never. I didn't watch season one. I'm sorry. Well, there's a but there's a new like this isn't spoiling. There's anything. a new. There's a new carbon. There's a new carbon. Oh, <laughs> you need to watch. Oh, but are you going to watch that show? I will. I mean, but like you were saying, there's just so much to watch that like when people are like, oh my god, marvelous Miss Maisel. I'm like, yeah, here it's the best show ever. I don't have time. They're like, what about you? Oh, I hear it's an amazing show. Don't have time. Like. I'll get to well, it. I will. I'm not, Listen, if this entices you, there's a fight scene where a guy fights a bunch of naked lady clowns. Whoa. It actually, it actually, I forget because there's been so many shows since that, but that show was awesome. I remember it's, being at Defy really, when it first came out and everyone it also, talked about it. It just changes a lot. Like it's a very different type of show. Yeah. There's one actress in there that is straight up garbage. Like, oh, like yeah. really bad. <laughs> like, call her out. Like, but it, it really, it really is like sci-fi Witcher in a weird way. Mm. But I, but I think it's, I do think it's a. They over, do some time. I do think stuff, it's a smarter yeah. show. Mm. It's interesting. Like, there's a lot more to it, and um, I just think it's also just really cool. Like, there's a lot that I thought was fun, cool about it. It's a fun it. world that they built. Yeah, the sort of like commentary on class warfare and stuff. Yeah. Speaking of which, maybe too much of a jump, but does anyone know when the next Westworld is coming out? Because I love that. It's supposed ooh, to be this year. A lot. And it's yeah. got Jesse. Hell yeah. 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 Mr. 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 W. Mr. White. <laughs> bitch. Yo. Yo. What's up with all these, I these didn't sign androids, up. bitch? I didn't sign up for all these androids, Mr. <laughs> White. No. No, you got yourself into this. I'm getting out. But um, before all this... Buy my mezcal. Buy my mezcal. Buy my mezcal. Bitch. Uh, March 15th. March 15th. That's oh, so sh- Oh my God. Hell yeah. Oh, oh y- y'all are never going to see me again in March. 2020s. 2020 is the year. 2020 is the year. And I can see clearly now 2020. And we didn't go to war with Iran yet. Well, so we don't well, know we about don't the know cotton that. when this is going to come out. Uh, um, we don't. Every day is different nowadays also for your anime fans this year we've got the uh, demon slayer movie coming out promised neverland season two and in the fall attack on titan i believe the final season okay i have to ask are anime movies ever good nope but this one might be because from what I've heard, well, I don't want to say anything. The from cow- what I've heard, this one has potential to be good. The Cowboy Bebop movie was really good, but that's yeah. also kind of different. Like because it's like it doesn't have they never have like any bearing to the anime. They're like a side no. story, right? The My Hero Academia one I watched very recently, and oh. like it was 
very corny, but it's also the kind of thing where it's like, hey, we're headed to this island where no one's allowed to have contact with the outside world because of specific reasons. Oh, so we're not going to be able to talk to any of these people after the summer's done? Nope. And then they show up and like all their friends are there already. It's like, what are you guys doing here? We got summer jobs. Now we're part of the story. And it's just like they breeze right uh, past it. You're done. That's It was crazy. That's so, that's, and that's like the funny thing about not just anime, but also... Um, I think like Japanese live action mm -hmm. oh, is God. like the shows, the shows are so much more popular than the movies. Like, mm -hmm. like, pe like movies aren't really like a big thing there yeah. as much. Like, like movies have always been held to a higher standard than TV up until recently mm -hmm. in the U S but it seems like it's always like whenever it's like an anime movie, like it's a movie offshoot. It's just kind of like an extra thing to make money on. And it's not yeah. an essential part to the actual Well, budget-wise, it's technically only like three episodes of a TV show. That's true. Like, it's just, it's not like it's different. That's it. It's just length. They'll often blow the budget on like one major fight scene. I will say, I think it was last summer, I saw Dragon Ball Super Broly. Mm -hmm. um, I was invited out to an event and um, that was awesome. That was a lot of fun. It was like a big ass episode, but the fight scenes were fantastic. Yeah. And didn't have that much of a bearing on any sort of story, but it was still just like, hey, it was a grand old time. Nice. But that Death Note live action movie though, right? That starred never Laser Corn. Never saw that. Never saw that. <laughs> that dude looks like Laser Corn. I also never saw it. Oh, apparently they're doing more of a run uh, manga wise, and I think therefore anime of Death Note. I heard that that was announced, really? but also it's sort of just like, isn't that story all set? Death Aren't, Note, Death Note also fit perfectly in the time it came out. <sighs> yeah. It came out of the peak of emo culture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that just it just fits so hard. Like it fit Death Note sums up 2007. <laughs> like it really was the vibe. That was the vibe of 2007. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit in 2020. God, mm -hmm. I love Death Note. That was the, that was like the first Death Note's that incredible. That was like the first anime that I that I really watched aside from Pokemon. It's not it's yeah. not sold it's not advertised as it should be because it's kind of sold like they they the advertisements or the like showings of it are very like lean into like it's demonic and dark. I'm like, no, it's a detective story. Yeah, it's the coolest detective story you're ever gonna watch. Yeah, it's yeah. Sherlock. It's an ep it's like the coolest version yeah. of Sherlock. Where you ever. like the characters on both sides too. On the one hand, you're like, I want this person to get away with it, and on the other hand, you're like, get him, get him, yeah. find him out. Is it's, this the moment? It's, it's there's nothing more yeah. frustrating than when you watch a show yeah. and the show is different than how it looks mm -hmm. to a serious degree, mm -hmm. and you try to explain that to people. And they're like, uh, not that show. And you're like, no, 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 no. It's not what you think it is. You yeah. need to watch it. Also, it had two seasons and it was yes. done. That's I how love anime, that. that's how anime, well, anime is either 26 episodes or 5,000 million episodes. Yeah. We're looking at you, One Piece. But it was but it was great that you can just like watch this thing, see a great story, and then yeah. it ends in a satisfying way yeah. rather than just slowly burning out. Yeah. I respect that. It's the same thing with like reboots and live action stuff. Like Arrested Development, the first three seasons, I think it was one of the funniest, most well-crafted pieces of television mm -hmm. ever. And when it was like, people were like, oh, it's coming back. I was like, no, please no. Mm -hmm. It was so good when it was flying under the radar. And then season four was hot garbage. And then they made another one. And it was also hot garbage. Yeah. And I, it's so sad because things become a parody of themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's like, tell us the story you want us to yeah. see. It became kind of meta, yeah. right? It became meta. And also all the actors were unavailable to film with one another. So they were like, what if everybody has their own separate story? It's like, great. That's not what the show is. It's yeah. dealing with a crazy messed up family forced mm -hmm. to be stuck together in a situation it's not even the same show nobody nobody learned from avatar last airbender yeah perfect three seasons yeah. perfect arc mm -hmm. never saw it Are you never watched avatar last airbender no bro i don't know that's the uh m night Shyamalan oh movie, yeah right no no uh, god <laughs> damn it no you that goof. show is that show holds the f up yeah yeah it's uh, great wouldn't people argue that's not anime it's, I'm not saying it's anime. I'm just saying it's, it's just a, a really show. great. Okay. But Arrested season. Development is anime. We can Arrested Development is anime. anime. It's the ultimate anime. Mm -hmm. the, you got all the tropes. But that is also why guy. shows yeah. that get canceled are held to such a high degree. Because yeah. it's like they went out. Firefly. They were great. Firefly. Firefly. Well, beautiful. Firefly had a movie that was better great. than the show. Yeah. Serenity's dope. Is it? Oh, that movie's dope. I saw it before I saw the show and I was like, that movie was incredible. And I saw it with my mom who doesn't like sci-fi stuff. And she's like, that was a really good movie. It's awesome. That's why it all boils down to story. It's like, yeah, the setting can change. Yeah, there can be, you can be in space, whatever. But like, let's let's just have some cool stories. Right. That's why I feel, you know, you know, it's not going to be for everybody. And I get sort of poo-pooed a lot for being like, you talk about anime a lot. But it's also like, 
some of the stories that I've been able to experience are just so cool. And I feel bad if someone is like completely writing it off to the point where they're definitely going to miss out on a cool story just because they're like, no, it's all like Pokemon. And you're like, no, it's just a cool story. And they're not limited by what an actor can do or what CGI sure. can do. You're just drawing stuff. Well, it's no different than how uh, Mandalorian on Disney Plus is based off of Akira Kurosawa movies. Like it's based off oh, yeah. Yeah. Japanese samurai movies. And yeah, some of them a, are. Some of them definitely feel that way. Yeah. Or we Westerns and that, but Westerns, yeah. a lot of American Westerns were inspired by- Was it called like Lone Wolf and Cub or something like that? Lone Wolf and Cub. There's also like, there's a couple, oh, so there's a set, there's essentially a seven samurai episode yeah. of Mandalorian. Yeah. Right. That, that episode was so pointless. It was, yeah, it was, but they had to fill. Mm. space Mandalorian is okay just okay you thought yeah. it was just okay just I loved okay. it did you watch you watched all of it yep you even after that last episode you felt that last way last episode was awesome but, but overall overall okay. I mean the way they made it was so that you didn't necessarily have to watch every episode mm -hmm. so it felt like and they were just like so now he's gonna take a piece of all these other things that he did that have no connection and he brings it all together for the last episode I think it's a preference thing because the same reason that you seem to be a little turned off by uh. it I, I loved that aspect because I I may have talked about this on pod before, so if I have, I'm sorry, but I enjoy Star Wars, but I wouldn't say I'm like a diehard fan. I don't get like mad when a movie comes out and it doesn't go where I want it to go, but I've always been a little bit disappointed by it because the formula is like, we're gonna start out on desert planet and we're gonna need this thing. Oh, you need that person and that thing? You're gonna have to go to swamp planet. All right, now let's go to swamp planet. Let's go to this thing. Yeah. And it ends up being so samey because they don't have much time to spend in each spot. So what I love about Mandalorian is like this episode, takes place on Swamp Planet. What is there to explore on Swamp Planet? Oh, there's a village. What is daily life like in the village? Like, I've always wanted to be like, go to the desert planet, but have them explore a temple. Have yeah. that be an entire movie, the temple that they find and, and put in space. And show the culture of it. But when, dude, it, you know? but when dude goes to the Swamp Planet and something happens and then he leaves Swamp Planet, it didn't change the story in any way. It didn't change. But that's he was how just TV like, used to be. Like, he just brings Yoda there and he's like, I can't keep baby Yoda here. All right. Here I go, I'm off, well, nothing happens. It did introduce him to some characters that need to come up later. Aw, character. It also shows that, you know, there, you know, someone might say, you know, why wouldn't he just drop off this person and have a safe life? And it's like, well, that is his first thought. Let's explore that. And we as viewers got to have an interesting contained story. It also showed him, this is, I guess, a lot of spoilers at this point, but it also showed like, oh, he was maybe interested in some love. And he doesn't get to have that. He doesn't get to have that normal life. Like he's tempted with- Why are you making me like this show more, Damien? I don't Stop know. Stop it. That's just, I, 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 I viewed <laughs> it- It's one of my favorite episodes. I viewed no, it very no, similar to like uh, to Witcher where I'm like, this is just like a fun yeah. show. Yeah. Like we've gotten to this point where there's, cause there's so much where we're like, we are ranking TV on such hardcore elements. And Breaking Bad was kind of the start of it where it's mm -hmm. like, it's got to have foreshadowing. It's got to like all mean something, every single element of a TV show. Mm -hmm. Whereas like shows like Witcher and Mandalorian, I'm like, this is just awesome. Yeah. Oh, that, ha why did that happen? Cause it's awesome. And yeah. I'm like, I'm totally fine with that being the reason. And I'm also just kind of stoked for us to be completely done with the Skywalker saga because every time a movie comes out, half of the world hates it with a That's passion. That's not what he would and do. I, and like with yeah. Mandalorian, you can't have those opinions because it's all new characters yeah. that we can't yeah. have. So I'm like, let's please never touch on the Skywalker saga ever again and just make new sure. new characters that everyone can just be down with. I love how angry people get about it. People it's get a lot. I, I, it blows lot. my mind. Yeah. People, Star Wars fans are so much angrier than I've ever seen football fans. Like it's insane. Yeah. It, it's nuts. And like, I don't really, I can't think of another fan base that's like that. Cause like Star Trek fans are all kind of like very cool with all of Star Trek. Mm -hmm. And like, there's stuff that they'll be like, oh yeah, that series was terrible. But you know, it's like, whatever. Like they're not that mad about it. Whereas Star yeah. Wars fans, holy God. <laughs> I feel like sometimes like there's, I, there's a little bit of pity there I think is maybe the right word where like you know if someone's toxic and going after one of the actors screw them I don't care like yeah. get them out of there I don't know to really love a thing so much that it like defines you but to also never be happy or satisfied it's like it's like Pirates of the Caribbean it's like we can eat and drink all we want but it tends to ash in our mouths I'm like that sucks like is there any part <laughs> yeah. of this thing that you love that you actually love Yeah. and I'm not like making fun of them I'm like that's just kind of legit I think it's, sad I think it's also like a lot of these fans there's this feeling of like but I am the real fan I read all the books mm -hmm. I know all the lore sure. so i know star wars and this is not star wars and it's like well yeah. 
But it is it because is Star Wars. somebody <laughs> wrote it and then yeah. they filmed it, and now it's Star Wars. I try to like put myself in their shoes. And like, I love Dark Souls. I love that series. So if they made a Dark Souls TV show and instead of it being like all silent and somber, they had like a wise cracking, like almost Nathan Drake style, like, whoa, sorry, I had to drop in kind of character. <laughs> yeah. I would I would really hate that. But yeah. I also wouldn't be like, no, uh, no, 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 sir. Yeah. It's not that it's like, it's okay to be like, you know what? That's not for me. And mm-hmm. it doesn't take away the aspect of this that I like. Yeah. You know, I more like orange stout and smug. <laughs> am yeah. I right? Losers. <laughs> nice. To the three people in the comments. I just, <laughs> yeah. I just remembered I was a huge like Mass Effect fan. Oh yeah. And then I saw on on like Hulu or something, there was like a Mass Effect anime movie. Oh. And I tried watching it and it was hot fing garbage. Mm-hmm. And then so I was just like, I don't need to watch this. Turn it off. Yeah. And I haven't thought about it since. Yeah. I didn't like go attacking and say, like, this is not real Mass Effect. You wouldn't do this. Exactly. It's just like I was like, nope. Yeah. No thanks. How about that? That it's not for you. And also, <laughs> like, you see little kids at Star Wars Land now getting lightsabers made for themselves. It's for them. It's always been kind of a corny series. Like Han Solo taps a, a stormtrooper and then do 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 like sneaks around. Like it's supposed to be a little bit tongue in cheek sometimes. Yeah. But you know. And like, look uh, to to call myself out, like. Game of Thrones was the thing that I was the biggest fan of. Sure. But it also wasn't like my day was ruined because Game of Thrones, the final season was just, it's not even, the, the difference between Star Wars and Game of Thrones, I will say is there was stuff in Star Wars that like people were so mad about Last Jedi because of decisions that were made mm-hmm. as opposed to them just clearly not caring. Mm-hmm. Um, but that didn't mean that I'm like, not a fan of it anymore. I'm just like, yeah, oh, it's, I can openly say I thought something sucked and not be like angry about it. Yeah. Yeah. The, like, the conversations we had were like, well, what's really cool and what I wish they would have shown was in the books, they sort of allude to this. And I thought that would have been a really cool storyline to see as opposed to like, this isn't real Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. You don't really know the real yeah. thing like I do. I'm also like, not mad at people who liked it. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I thought it, I just was like, oh, man, that sucks. I wish it was better yeah. like i wish yeah. i liked it like isn't yeah. that lucky that they get to like it that they got to feel <laughs> yeah, like that ending yeah. was satisfying cool good for them i, I, I mean, guess the difference there too is we also still have the books that yeah i guess i will say mass effect andromeda was was a big letdown for me i'd say that's that's more on the company than mm-hmm. it is the the yeah. final product that was a disappointment but the parts time. that you're still a huge fan of are still go, there yeah and i yeah. didn't go online and and start trashing them i'm like i don't think this was a was a finished product yeah and no not many people set out to make something bad like and they're definitely yeah. not doing it to spite anyone yeah and, and also with with something like with something as big as star wars they have so many so many hands mm-hmm. in that in that well they're probably making process. it they're they're probably what sucks is part of their process now is trying to avoid the hate, which ends up making th- causing them to make decisions that cause more hate. Yeah. Yes. And I would also say that these movies now have to be made with an international audience in mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're like where Star Wars was originally made by, you know, an American with American tastes, movies now have to be made with international tastes in mind, people that maybe care more about an action scene Mm -hmm. than a story. Not that I'm saying that non-Americans are dumb and they only like to see explosions. Damn. (laughs) But action is a lot easier to translate to other other countries than than maybe dialogue. There's also, there's also people, people, there's different things. Like I said, a lot of people like want the TV shows and movies to like everything has to mean something there's got to be deeper it's like yeah but also the, it's also maybe just supposed to be entertaining like yeah. it's that tough balance remember and fun <laughs> yeah it's that tough balance but also like my thought with all of it is like there's just so much content out there that i'm not gonna harp on one thing man yeah. there's just a million i've gotten in this loop again i find myself every year at some point where i'm I, i'll text damien be like man i really want to like play a video game or watch a movie or something i'm like i don't know what to do and i end up not doing anything mm-hmm. because i'm like there's too many choices yeah, yeah. I'm like, there's too much good stuff. There's been so many times that I've left my Netflix just like on. Yeah. And I've been on my phone and just like. Yeah. Get, it happens. I just don't it watch happens anything. a lot. Yeah. It's too always, much. I find it's always interesting what you gravitate toward. Cause we do have that conversation a lot where it's just like, you know, I think we kind of got spoiled by specifically Skyrim, things like that, where you could just get lost for hours and hours. We want that experience. So we'll check in and do that. But I'll, I'll say to you like, Hey, why don't you try this? Or why don't you try that? And sometimes 
you don't, which is normal and fine. Sometimes you'll try something like six months later, you'll be like, so I did finally pick up Persona 5 and I'll be like, whoa. And then other times I'll just casually drop like, a, oh, I heard a new good show is a Vinland Saga. And then literally that night you were farther than I was. Yeah. It's just funny. Like, it's what just we random. Gravitate toward. It's yeah. random. Yeah. Strange tangent. Uh, mm. uh -oh. Damien, you're looking a little swole, bro. Oh, thank you, man. I What's up with that? that? Um, well, I've just been making healthier choices. Um, even if I haven't had time to go to the gym, I've been like making a specific effort at home. Like, all right, push ups, sit ups, dips. Um, some one hundred push ups, one hundred yes. sit ups. Oh. Yeah, One Dude, Punch Man. I've why been, don't we do the One Punch Man workout? I would love that. Well, the weirdest thing about the One Punch Man workout, so there's an anime or, or manga or whatever where this guy like is the strongest hero in the world and he's depressed because of it because he can beat anything in one punch and so he's just sad. Nothing's fun anymore. There's no challenge. But his the reason he got that way is he does 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and then a 10K run. Isn't the 10K run kind of a big leap between the others? 10K like, runs actually not six miles that's not that crazy miles. So like everything else is like it almost sounds like a joke like oh 100 push-ups that's it oh 100 sit-ups that's it then a 10k run is just like oh that's, that's gonna take some time yeah i don't know but 100 push-ups is a lot for a lot of it's people 100 push-ups is quite a lot yeah fair enough it's a it's a sit -ups but it's, is a, it's a for normal people. it's a it's a no it's, no, a it's to me it's the perfect workout because it's like it's enough to be like yeah you're someone who's getting in shape not enough to be like I'm going to become a superhero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not Batman's workout uh, but routine. But have you tried it, Shane? It, no. I mean, so I, you don't know. We could do it. Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. It's do definitely, it. it's definitely a workout if you're training for a half marathon. Yeah, like that's a solid workout if you're like, yeah, I'm gonna do a half marathon in a couple months. Like, okay, do that. But that's what's funny about it. That that's how he became the strongest human on the planet. I say really we just funny. do this forever and see how wacky our bodies look. Yeah, you with like look wacky, you'd just be like a uh, in good shape. But you'd have very specific, like your back wouldn't have any sort yeah, of definition. No. You would be very like built in. You'd want to add a hundred pull-ups to it. Yeah, but even pull-ups, like you know, it, it does this motion, but like there's no like forward pull. Like, yeah, no, row. it's not a complete workout. It's not. Anyway, thank you. Um, yeah, man. Been making healthier choices. Been exercising. I'm down. I think technically ten pounds. I think I said that before, but my scale was not on a. Thank you. My scale was not on a proper surface, so that was a problem before. But I think I'm down to one ninety six. Hey, went down below the two hundred mark. Uh, yeah, which is good okay. for me. If I could get to like one eighty six, I'll be happy. Yeah. And then yeah, and then I'll just continue building from there but for me it's more about being healthy as opposed to the number but it's nice to know that like i can see that number and be like oh there is a difference yeah, you the have things like a i have goal done. post a goal post yeah yeah, yeah. i want to gain Thanks, i want to gain weight that's awesome yeah yeah i want to gain season? i want to gain some muscle nice where I don't know, just everywhere. Where are you One gain peck. It? I want to gain like 10 pounds, I think. 10 I, pounds of to, muscle? I'd love to hit 180. You could do that easy. Where yeah. are you going to fit that muscle? Where's it going? There's plenty of places. One peck. What, both my buttocks. Singular peck. And, what, just, and the just, other dude, one buttocks. Can you, just work, can you just work the, what is my it, the neck. delts? Yeah. What is this right here? I, I yeah. forget. Trapezius. Yeah. Just, trapezius. Just work your trapezius. Yeah. yeah. Get that just swallow get neck. Um, can I sing for you? I want to do a, uh, yeah, because I want to do that because I want to do a, a Spartan race this year. Okay, so I the, the, as we're filming this, the podcast where we had said that originally uh, just came out. So that gives you a bit oh. of a timeline. And so a lot of people were saying, you know, whoa, the Spartan race is the, as hard as they come. Like we were talking about Tough Mudder and stuff like that, but some people in the comments were like, no, Spartan race is like the hard one. Like well, it's a lot of military exercises. Well, and we, I think we do. Wes and, Wes and Mari have done it. Yeah, but they're both very fit people. Wes is pretty in shape. We and have Mari months is, to get into it. I don't know, man. I got, I got bronchitis. I want to go to bed. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do it. Okay. Well, I'm going to do it. I'll, Kevin's going to do it. I'll join you. All right. But I'll I skip all we have, we have time. We I have time to my train. One punch workout we have time to do the one punch workout. Is there one that starts like by my house? And also, can I use a vehicle to win the race? <laughs> Dude, if you're getting into shape, no, I'm kidding. You I'm can do sassy. it. I'm being a sassy boy. I want to know. So, so the San Diego one, I'm not saying this is the one we're doing. It's a 5K with 20 obstacles. That's, that's not, not bad. That's not bad at all. 5K. There's got to be a 10K one. There's got to be a 10K one. I think, a 10K I think, one. I think if you fail an obstacle, we they do make the you do one. something crazy. That's no. the thing. No, no, not at all. I've heard like if you fail an obstacle, you have to do like a bunch of things. How would they be keeping track? There's thousands of people doing that. Like a guy shows up, he's just like, all right, you didn't climb up the wall. Now you got to kiss me. <laughs> and you're like, whoa, I don't know about that. And he's just like, I I definitely work for this race. I'm Mr. Spartan. I'm Mr. Spartan. Um, I'd want to do something more challenging. How about that? Okay. How about this one? Uh. New Jersey. This one's the Tri-State Jersey Ultra and Beast Weekend. Okay. The Ultra. Oh God. Is a 50k. Well, okay. 60 obstacles. This is fastest time. 
seven hours. That's an Iron Man yeah, competition. I'm, uh, that's that's out. that's crazy. all right. All right, fine, fine. We'll just do. I'm we'll talking just do the like beast. I'd just, love to find like a we'll ten mile. I'd love to find like a ten mile. Sure, the Beast is a half 10K? marathon. Ten mile. Ten mile. Ten to, like a half marathon, but with obstacles would be dope. <sighs> That's po- that's very okay. doable. Does anybody else chafe when they run? <laughs> and the sound of your thighs scraping together is so loud it hurts You're your ears. You're gonna be in such good shape by then it won't yeah. happen. And yep. then it, there's sparks flying everywhere. Beast is a half marathon with okay. 30 obstacles. Doable. Three hours fastest time. That, yeah, that's doable. Fastest time, three hours? Yeah. That's totally doable. Think about how awesome you'd feel once you did that. I'd feel God, great, but I also feel pressure. Be... Like I'm going to be the one that everyone's like, "You good back there?" And I'm like, yeah, "I'm good." You have yeah. months to like put put yourself like as we are going on tour and we're going to Australia. Th- this would be in. We'd have months after Australia. These obstacles have to be tough because yeah. I did. Because this is a half marathon. I did the marathon in three hours and twenty eight minutes. So these well, obstacles so have to I know be tough. also I know also the point of Spartan races is that you do an obstacle and then you turn back and you help people. You none of the obstacles are singular obstacles. They are teamwork obstacles. Mm. So you'll like climb up a wall because people helped you get up the wall. Then you're supposed to turn back and help other people get up yeah, the wall. So it. you're you are taking your time at these obstacles because it's it's not that it's like oh it took forever to get up that wall it's like no i stayed for 15 minutes and helped people interesting okay so the super is 10k 25 obstacles 80 minutes fastest time okay we can do that one if if that's if we can get everyone on board whatever whatever we get wow, the most i don't want to drag nobody no because there's other people if i want to see who i, I want to see get the biggest smosh team to do this so we're all together i mean that's that's a little over six miles that's yeah, that sounds to me like an achievable goal. Also, if we we'll make a video, if we make a video out of it, well, there you go. Then yeah. that's that's easier to film. That's true. Yeah, we've got to have like one incredibly like willing camera person to also carry a camera rig and jog alongside us, like a Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do at some point want to run a ha- half marathon, though. Let's do it. I would like to do that at some point. It's not bad. Yeah, it's definitely doable. I I I trained for one once, hmm. and I was doing it, and. Uh, the person that I was running it with couldn't couldn't finish it, and I was like, yeah. "Okay, I'll I'll stop with them." But I was, we were halfway through, and I was like, "I was good." I was like, <laughs> "I could have finished that so well," yeah. but I was I was like, "No, I'm not gonna do that." And leave I them. did I did one that went along the beach. I saw dolphins. That's and, awesome. Uh, That's awesome. The race yeah. ended with tacos and beer. That's Yo, super great. That's great. I would probably vom, but that sounds cool. <laughs> not if you trained. Not if you trained, man. I went. I I took two of my friends, and one of them was not prepared, and he. Hated it. <laughs> he it's was tough. So pissed. My my brother and my sister in law. This was like 15 years ago. She's a runner, and she runs all the time. And uh, so she trained for this half marathon. And my brother decided did not train for it. And last minute was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it too. And they get to the final stretch, and he's like, I'm not gonna let her beat me. He just kicks. <laughs> and past he push and he pushes and he like beat yeah. her at the last second. But then he was bedridden for mm-hmm. a week. Uh, yep. And she was didn't fine. Stretch, she was he? fine. No, he was just didn't train for it, so his yeah. muscles weren't prepared for yeah. it. Take so he destroyed his ego destroyed his body. All right. So we'll look we'll look for a Spartan race type race yes. to do. Okay. We're doing it. We're gonna okay. all get on board. Yes. Damn, We're gonna, you're gonna you're gonna be so cut by then. Twenty twenty yes. Smosh Smosh crew gets just gets, gets absolutely ripped. jacked. Yeah, we're getting yeah. we're becoming titans this all year. Right. We're gonna be ripped comedians. <laughs> we're gonna be all in, as buff as possible. We're gonna be a bunch of Joe of Rogans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, pull that up. <laughs> we're gonna have Elon Musk on here, and he's guys. Gonna we gotta start hunting trouble. elk like tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Bow hunting. I ate camel the other day. What? Yeah. Dude, well, we, goodbye, gotta, we, gotta finish, pod. <laughs> we gotta finish this pod. You bring we, this. We, you bring this up now at the end of the pod. Not, we'll get, but we'll we'll get to this next time because okay. I want to hear about this, and okay. I'm not gonna. Damien talk to you about ate it. a camel. Not Damien right. ate a camel. camel. Some camel. All right. Some camel. A oh, whole camel. That's a lot of camel. Well, dude, all right. We'll okay. we'll get to that next time. Bye. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we got some new merch in the store, guys. Check it out. Smosh dot store. Uh, none of us are wearing it, so you got to go there to find out what okay. it is. It's really cool. <laughs> Uh, Damien Shane, thank you so much thank for coming on here. Bros like we. 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 Bros like we.